with Ike, we were pulled in about a week before the storm, approached by the Texas governor's office to help them make decisions about evacuations. So we were already in simulation mode when Hurricane Ike hit. At the time that Ike hit, we had all the resources that we needed to be able to do simulations of the storm. And so within a week of the storm, we were already doing simulations of the event after it had happened. And since then, there's been a tremendous amount of data collection. So this data includes uh, water levels, currents, waves, etc. We have the, the chance, which is really unique in some sense, to now go back and simulate the storm with the most accurate data that we can collect and see if our simulations can match the data that was collected during the storm. If you're going to do predictive simulation, which means that you're going to use your simulations to predict what's going to happen in the future, the first thing that you have to do is go back and show that you can reproduce events that happened in the past. The mathematics is the fundamental building block for all of this. The huge gains that we've made over the past, say, 15 years has been because of the development of big parallel computers. We do the bulk of our computations at the Texas Advanced Computing Center to have help from TAC personnel whenever we had problems getting our codes to run. There's no way that we could have done this research without them. This simulation shows what would have happened if Hurricane Ike had hit landfall here at this point instead of here. These colors are the maximum water level and red is about 20 to 25 feet of water. So what, what you would have seen in this scenario is a huge amount of water hitting the upper reaches of Galveston Bay and going propagating up the Houston Ship Channel, flooding most of the western part of, the, of Galveston Bay. All these cities along the, the western part of the bay would have been flooded and the entire Galveston Island probably would have been inundated with water. So that would have been almost like a worst case scenario. The model's really being used now to answer questions about future protection systems. Some people have proposed building a huge seawall or levee which would go from the west end of Galveston Bay all the way up to the top of the Bolivar Peninsula. In Ike, this region took the brunt of the storm. It still takes the brunt of the storm, but this region between uh, east of Houston is much less populated all of this area would be pretty much protected. The dike doesn't offer any protection to this region the way it stands now, but it would have prevented a lot of the surge that happened in Galveston Bay. And we've also looked at what would have happened if Ike had been a stronger storm, because by the time it hit land, it had gone from a Category 4 back to a strong Category 2. I mean, it was still a massive storm, but if the winds had been stronger and it had an even larger surge behind it, would such a dike have withstood that? And it's not clear. A 17-foot wall is not going to prevent 25 feet of water from overtopping and flowing into the, into the bay. For decisions to be made, we're going to have to do a lot of computer simulations because that's the only way that we're going to get answers. We've met with uh, people who are in the forecasting business, people that are concerned about environmental impacts or ecology or development questions, Department of Homeland Security, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, the Governor's Division of Emergency Management uses our computer models to help them make decisions about emergency planning and evacuation. And um, what we hope is that the policymakers um, will you know, make decisions based on informed science, the best that we can do. It's been absolutely vital for agencies that are responsible for making these decisions. And of course, there's always another hurricane season coming up. So we're preparing for this hurricane season, um, getting our forecast model ready to go, just in case there's a hurricane that approaches either the Texas or Louisiana coast, then we'll be ready.